Now, to begin making your shapes, okay, you need to first decide what kind of shape you're going to begin with. So if I want to do a square or a circle or a rounded edge rectangular rectangle, um, I'm going to choose my, um, my tools, okay, over my shape tools over here in the toolbar. If you click and hold your mouse down, you can get all of these different shape options, okay? I'm going to begin with an ellipse tool, so that's the one I'm going to click on. Now, what I want you to show you first is how to cut out the centers of circles or the centers of squares, <coughs> excuse me, using your pathfinders, okay? So what you want to do first is uh, click your mouse, hold the shift key, and drag out your shape. Now it doesn't matter the size of your shape. It can be bigger than this. It can be smaller than this. It's totally fine. I'm making it big so you all can see it very well on your screen. Okay. Now, in order to cut the center of the circle out so it looks like an O, we need to copy and paste an exact replica of this shape. So to do that, I want you to do a control C, control C, which copies, or you can go to edit, copy, Okay, and then we're going to do something a little different than just normal paste. We're going to do a paste in place, which means it's like two pieces of bread that fit together perfectly. When you stack one on top of the other, you can't even tell the other one's there. So they're directly laying right on top of each other. So to do a paste in place, you want to do control F as in Frank. Okay, or you can do a paste in front or paste in back. Okay, if you do it, you want to do paste in front. Just make your life a little easier. Okay, now that you have the two circles, exact replicas of one another, I want you to choose your black arrow tool or your selection tool and make sure that your top shape is the one that is selected. So you only want one shape selected right now, the top shape. Okay. Next, we're going to resize this top shape so that it's a little smaller than our bottom shape. Okay, so that way we can cut out the inside circle. So to do that, we're going to use this button right here. This is your free, trans free transform tool. Now, to make this transform without having to pull from both corners, okay, you can transform it centered on top of the other object. Now to do that, I would like you to hold the shift key and then the alt key. Click one of your corners and resize. Okay, see how that resizes to my center point? So that way there's no scooching around and guessing whether it's centered or not. Okay, now once you get to a place you like, you can let go of the keys and the mouse and now you have two circles, one a little bit smaller than the other. Okay, now we need to select both shapes. So to select both of them, I want you to hold your shift key and click the little circle in your layers palette. Now these little red squares mean that both of these layers are selected. Then come over to your pathfinder and click this button. Okay, this is the subtract from shape button. So what we're doing is we're using that smaller circle like a pair of scissors to cut out the center of the bigger circle. So click this button and there we go. Now there's nothing in the center of the circle and we just have this nice blue ring. Okay, so that's one way that you can begin making your pucker and bloat. Now you can do that with rectangles, you can do that with circles, you can do that with the star tool or the polygon tool, any of them, okay? Now to begin adding the pucker and bloat effect to the circle, um, you need to go to object, then path, and then add anchor points. If you notice, four more sets of red dots showed up around your circle. The more anchor points you have, the more areas where your circle or your, your ring right here is going to bloat or pucker, okay? So the points are kind of like a bend in your jeans or that's where the wrinkle is, okay? So I'm gonna add one more set of points. So you wanna go to object, path, add anchor points. It adds another set of anchor points. Once you get the amount of points you want to use, go to effect, okay, then distort and transform, and choose pucker and bloat.
Okay, then make sure that your preview area is checked so that way you can see what you're going to do and just play with these sliders. I like the way this one looks. The more, the higher the percentage, the more extreme the puckering and the bloating is. Okay, the less, you know, the points go outside, positive points go in towards the center. Okay, I like the way that this looks. I'm going to keep it at 11%. So then, once you get it away you like, click OK. Now, I want you all to begin to experiment with the different shapes, how you can get things to pucker and bloat. You can change the colors of them by using your swatches palette. Okay, you can. I'm going to do a, a rectangular one now for you so you can see the rectangle or the square. Okay, remember object, path, add anchor points, then go to effect, distort and transform, pucker and bloat. Okay, and if you change this, negative make it look pointy, the points go further away from the center, and the positive percentages, the points come into the center. Okay. Get it the way you like, click OK, and I just want you to, to begin to experiment. Um, let's make this one for a screen, okay? Now, to do a copy and paste in place one more time, copy is Control C, paste in place is Control F. To chop out the center of this if you want to, select both layers, or both shapes, and choose this button, subtract from shape. Ah, now if you notice, it disappeared on me because I forgot to transform my top shape. So I need to transform that top shape. Okay, make it a little bit smaller. Then select both shapes and choose the subtract from shape. And now the center of my clover looking shape has been subtracted. Once you get a couple shapes, I want you to begin experimenting with layering, okay? Now, say I'm going to use just a circle. Make this one pink, okay? If I'm going to use a circle, and I want the circle to be underneath my green clover, but above my brown, flowery-looking organic shape, to do that, you just need to change the order of your layers. So if you look in your layers palette, I have my pink circle. If I want it to be underneath my green clover, I just click that layer and drag it below the green clover layer. Okay, now my green clover is closest to the top, then we have my pink circle, then we have that brown floral organic shape. Okay, so play with your layer order and arrangement for overlapping. Okay, try and create a visually interesting design. Um, for example, I'll show you mine. Remember, you need to use at least 15 shapes and at least three or four brushes. So these are all the pucker and bloat shapes that I used. Now you can make them really small, okay? You can make them pretty big. You can use solid shapes like these stars, which are just using the star tool I created those. You can add the different brushes to the outside of a line which will create this really interesting pattern okay you can make pattern lines now we loaded the illustrator brushes into um, the program files for Adobe Illustrator and remember that to get to those brushes to play with these lines so let me draw a circle okay now to add a purple patterned line you want to go into your brushes palette and click these three lines, open brush library, and then all of these brushes are what you guys just loaded in the program files. So you can click, uh, I'm going to click frilly brushes, and then I get these options, and I can click this, and now my stroke is frilly. Okay, so it looks like a frill. So I want you to experiment with colors, experiment with shape, experiment with the brushes for the outlines. Um, remember you need to use at least 15 vector shapes that you've created from scratch. Okay.
Once you do that, I want you to do a file save and make sure this is saved in your in your iDrive. Um, remember to save every five to six minutes, seven minutes, so that way in case you your computer freezes, you don't lose that much work. Okay. Once you're done with your 15 shapes, I want you to move on to the next tutorial and you can begin that one.